Hello there, Dr. Ancheta here. Welcome to my lecture on synovial fluid analysis. Synovial fluid, as we know, is the fluid that is known as the joint fluid. It is a transparent viscous liquid found within the cavities of the movable joints. Its major functions include uh, it reduces friction, it lubricates the joint, and as well as provides the nutrients for the cells that line this synovial, synovial uh, membrane. Then it lessens the shock, it acts as a buffer zone. Okay, so here are the basic parts of a synovial joint. Of course, you have the bone and the articular surface, which is actually cartilage. And there's the synovial membrane covering the entirety of the joint, which seals it off from the outside world. And normally, this is an aseptic environment, so therefore, no normal flora. Okay, so it does its function here. Now, let's focus on the synovial membrane first. Okay, the synovial membrane is composed primarily of the synoviocytes, which are the cells that secrete the hyaluronic acid and a small amount of protein, uh, chiefly your lubricin. The hy hyaluronan complex, which is uh, a complex of hyaluronic acid and other proteins, actually maintains the viscosity viscosity of the uh, joint fluid or synovial fluid and helps to moisten and lubricate the joint. Since uh, the synovial fluid is actually an ultrafiltrate, an ultrafiltrate of plasma, its chemical compositions are quite similar to the plasma concentration. Now here is uh, the normal uh, synovial fluid with the following parameters, and these are the normal values. We just like to stress that uh, the glucose or the chemical, some of the chemical uh, examinations or tests are done in conjunction with plasma because it compares the one with plasma. In this case, the normal glucose finding is less than uh, 10 milligrams per deciliter than the blood glucose, okay? So, <clears throat> so it might be lower than the um, plasma, but uh, should be less than 10 milligram lower than the blood glucose, all right? We will discuss this later. So not much of the volume, just about 3.5 mils. Could be colorless or pale yellow, clear, not turbid at all, and forms the string of four to six centimeters long. Leukocyte count is less than 200 with less than 25% neutrophils. Crystal should not be there and total protein should be less than three grams per deciliter, right? So remember this uh, normal values because the next slide will show you some of the diseases that are associated with the joint uh, fluid. And examination of the joint fluid is important uh, to determine some of the clues of what we're dealing with. These are the things, or these are the disease processes that might uh, affect the joint. And some of these come uh, with changes associated with the synovial fluid. For example, in non-inflammatory, okay? So these are the disease processes, examples of disease uh, disorders that are non-inflammatory. For example, osteoarthritis, basically a degenerative disease, okay? So in these diseases, 
you are going to find a clear yellow fluid with good viscosity, but the WBC count is less than 1,000 with neutrophils around 30% and a normal blood glucose. Okay. Next will be the inflammatory. Here you have two types, the immunologic inflammatory disease, whereby the uh, synovial fluid might be uh, cloudy, yellow, with poor viscosity, WBC counts are extremely high, uh, predominated by uh, neutrophilic cells and decreased blood glucose levels. There is also the possible autoantibodies present within the synovial fluid itself. The other inflammatory uh, condition might be due to crystal induced origin. Okay, here the synovial fluid often will show you a cloudy, milky fluid, low viscosity, extremely high WBC count, neutrophils making up the majority still, decreased glucose levels, and of course the crystals might be identified. In septic uh, joint disorders, there's a yellowish green discoloration with variable viscosity and high WBC counts. Usually neutrophils predominate these types. We decrease blood glucose, uh, not blood, blood synovial fluid glucose levels, extremely low, more than the others, okay? If you culture them, which is part of the examination battery, uh, you might find uh, a positive culture and of course the organism in gram stain. And hemorrhagic, as it is uh, a common sense, you might find a red fluid right here with low viscosity and the other parameters are quite similar to the plasma since blood has already seeped into the synovial fluid, uh, synovial joint itself, okay? So these are some of the major general bird's eye view of these disorders. Now in the clinics, uh, this bulge test is usually uh, used or is a tool to identify if there's an increased amount of uh, synovial fluid Okay. Clinicians do this just to estimate if there is uh, an increased amount or volume of your synovial fluid. <clears throat> so you have to do this, pinch the upper portion, and if bulging occurs right there, it might be obvious here. So which joint has much more uh, bulging by normal? So this one is actually the affected joint right there. You see, there is a sort of swall, uh, shallowing of the dents right there. But if you press it here and um, move it, bulging should come out. Okay. Right. So. Now, for specimen collection and handling, the process of specimen collection for the synovial fluid is known as your arthrosynthesis. Arthrosynthesis is done by uh, fine needle aspiration of the joint fluid, and it can be punctured at any site. But what is uh, important is actually the aseptic technique observed uh, on the skin to be punctured, okay? It can be through the patella, or the side of the synovial joint right there. Now, it is important that one should do the anti antiseptic technique because you might introduce the normal floor of the skin into the synovial joint, which is normally aseptic. So you might introduce uh, bacteria in there and the fluid Synovial fluid actually is a very good uh, culture medium for these organisms. 
particularly the gram positives. Okay, so how do you handle after you have collected them? I mean, after you have collected the volume of synovial fluid, okay, you observe if it clots or not upon collection, but normally synovial fluid does not clot. It may contain fibrinogen in disease joints because of the increased uh, flow of uh, uh, ultrafiltrate from the plasma and of course the increased permeability allowing uh, uh, larger proteins like fibrinogen to escape and seep into the synovial uh, cavity or synovial space. Usually uh, you're going to do uh, uh, an anticoagulant, include an anticoagulant in the collecting uh, tube, okay? And after collection, it should be distributed to the following tubes. So there is on, not less than one, uh, not more than uh, four or five tubes, depending on which uh, test are you going to perform. Okay, so it should be in this order. So you fill up the sterile heparinized tube first. This is for gram stain and culture and then heparinized and or end the tube, which is your uh, green top and the purple top. This one is for the cell counts. A plain tube uh, can be used for other tests like immunologic tests and a special tube for flu uh, glucose analysis, which contains fluoride as the uh, inhibitor of that enzyme for glucose. Now, there must be um, a warning or a caveat here. No one should use powdered anticoagulant. Now, anticoagulant in tubes come in various forms, okay? So the powdered ones are, are not uh, allowed to be used when you collect your central fluid. Why? It interferes with the interpretation on the crystal analysis. All tests should be done as soon as possible. So once you collect it, transport right away to the laboratory. Now for laboratory examination, we've got uh, several aspects or main aspects, okay? We have the macroscopic examination, which includes the following parameters, including your volume, color, and clarity, inclusions, if you see them and the viscosity, of course. Now for volume, normally up to 3.5 mils or milliliters. And usually it is recorded right away at the bedside in the patient's chart. But um, <clears throat> this is not a standard uh, parameter which is reported in the final result of the synovial fluid analysis but some laboratories do include the volume in their report. Now, for color and clarity, um, these are terms usually used to indicate this parameter. So colorless and clear, and dark yellow and clear. These are some of the examples of the conditions that may give the following description like greenish tinge if there is bacterial infection, red, brown, or santochromic orangey in color like this. Could be an indication that there was hemorrhage uh, occurring to the joint. And with this, and with this uh, white and cloudy, there, milky uh, clarity, that's where you can find the crystals. Now, sometimes the joint Fluid contains inclusion bodies, and these are the more most common inclusion bodies associated with the following diseases. Rice bodies for rheumatoid arthritis, these are your rice bodies right here, and the ochronotic shards, which are uh, fragments of prosthesis that are worn out as it is being used over time. Okay, so there. Now, viscosity uh, can be estimated 
in the laboratory as well, which is actually essential for uh, lubrication. Uh, so the more viscous the fluid is, uh, the more use it is for lubricating that joint. Now, this is due to the polymerization of the hyaluronic acid, which forms other complexes with other proteins. So it forms a thick fluid. Um, a thin fluid is like water. When you pour it, it flows. It drops like uh, that. But uh, a thick fluid, a viscous fluid, flows like honey. Okay. In fact, uh, you can do a string test. It's called string because the fluid forms a string before breaking off. And water, uh, when you pour it, it pours in drops. Okay. While the uh, honey, when you pour it, it, it forms a string, unbreakable string before it breaks off at the bottom. Ropes or machine tests can also be done to estimate the viscosity by adding two to 5% acetic acid to the fluid. And if there is a solid clot with clear fluid, that's normal, okay? I'll show you later. Now, this is a, an example of string test, which you think is normal here. Yes, this letter A is normal. It forms a string about four to six centimeters long. If it does not, then that's quite abnormal right there. It drops as it is being poured. Now this is the ropes test. Now these two fluids contain uh, clots in them. This one has a fragmented clot with uh, hazy fluid or cloudy fluid around in the background, while this one has a clear fluid and a one solid clot. This is normal right here, okay? Actually, you can grade it accordingly like this. This is good, fair, if the fluid is a bit cloudy, low, we have fragments, big fragments of uh, a clot right there with uh, hazy, much hazier, hazier uh, fluid and poor if you don't see any uh, clot. Upon the addition, of course, of your uh, acetic acid. So normal, these are some of the um, <clears throat> disease processes that make it of uh, these uh, findings, okay? Like in gout or gonorrhea, you won't find any clot here, just hazy fluid, okay? Now for microscopic examination, these are the following parameters where we can identify. For cell count, normally um, we have less than 200 cells per microliter. For sometimes it might be very viscous fluids, okay? And um, <clears throat> very viscous fluids uh, cannot be used for counting since you have to do it like uh, other uh, body fluids, like your blood. So you have to add a pinch of hyaluronidase, the enzyme which digests your hyaluronic acid, uh, about 0.5 ml of fluid. 0.05% hyaluronidase in phosphate buffer per ml of fluid. For example, if you have um, <clears throat> one ml of um, so, uh, three ml of uh, synovial fluid, how many uh, hyaluronidase uh, fluid will you add? So 0.5 ml per ml. So. 0.5 times 3, that's 1.5. So you add it onto the 3 ml of your um, centimeter fluid. So you incubate it at 37 degrees. That's body temperature for five minutes to allow the, the enzyme to work. Once uh, it, work, it works, then you have a non-viscous fluid ready for the counting itself. So 
if you remember the uh, Neobauer counter, which, will, which we are using for blood count in the CBC, this is a manual count, okay? You have to do it the same way, but the diluent is normal saline or uh, hypotonic saline, uh, but this is a more famous one because it contains methylene blue. It stains the cells and quite e uh, make it easier for counting. Okay, visualizes, makes the cells uh, fairly visible and easy to count. Uh, it is used on centrifuge preparations or thinly th smeared slides. Fluid is incubated with 100 days, like I've said earlier. And um, the inflammatory cells that are seen are the monocytes mostly and macrophages, sometimes the lymphocytes. And of course, some synovial lining cells or your synovocytes can also be seen like this one. This is a synovocyte. These are inflammatory cells. Neutrophils make up less than 25%, while lymphocytes about less than 15%. Now, there are extremely abnormal cells that also can be found here, like the LE cells, writer cells, RA cells, or otherwise known as your ragocytes. Then you can also see some lipid droplets, hemosiderin granules, and even cartilage cells. This is a multinucleated giant cell, okay? All I can say, maybe this is an osteoclast or uh, fused uh, histiocytes, okay? But I think this is most likely an osteo, uh, osteoclast, okay? Now, this is what we call your RA cells or your ragocytes. The one pointed with um, the arrows are your ragocytes. So these uh, neutrophils essentially contain these bluish inclusions within them, uh, composed primarily of precipitated uh, rheumatoid factor. Okay? That's why they're called ragocytes or RA cells. Now, we have also this set of cells right here at the bottom, where you can see neut neutrophils engulfing a rounded uh, matter right there. This rounded matter is actually degenerating um, nucleus of a lymphocyte. So these are called your LE cells, or lupus erythematosus cells. Neutrophils or phagocytes in general that uh, contain the nucleus of uh, lymphocyte within right there. That's uh, an LE cell. Now we have uh, these uh, cells. These are obviously your macrophages. Sometimes you might see lipid droplets within them right there. And these are your synovial lining cells. Usually uh, they have this uh, columnar to cuboidal configuration with rounded nuclei, nuclei and um, dense uh, chromatin pattern without uh, prominent nucleoli, okay? This is another uh, picture showing you the you see that rounded nucleus right there, the LE cell. So neutrophil engulfing a lymphocyte. That's a writer cell right there. It's a macrophage this time, engulfing um, a neutrophil. So if this is a neutrophil engulfing a lymphocyte called the LE cell, this is a writer cell. A macrophage engulfing a neutrophil. This is a degenerating neutrophil right there. You can see the lobes separated already. Now we have also this. Well, that's a macrophage which contains 
uh, reddish colorations. This is, uh, I think, uh, oil red owl. The stain used here is oil red owl, specifically to stain lipid component within the tissue. So therefore, this is a lipid laden macrophage with lipid droplets within. But sometimes um, you want you want you might see these uh, hemosiderin laden macrophages, like in pigmented villonodular synovitis. This is the disease that often shows this kind of cells within the synovial fluid. You can see the intense inflammatory reaction in the background. Now, uh, so much so for the cells, we move on to the crystals themselves. For crystals, you've got many types, okay? And the primary uh, disease process associated with the crystal that is deposited within joints is known as gout. Now, there are so many types of gout and the classic gout is known as your urate gout, where your monosodium urate monohydrate or MSU, monosodium urate crystals can be found. But we have also the pseudo gout, whereby calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals are found. Basic calcium phosphate or BCP, also known as your appetite gout. You even have calcium oxalate gout. And of course, the lipid gout. Sometimes uh, cholesterol crystals can be found and that's causing the gouty uh, disease. This is an example of the MSU or monosodium urate crystals, needle-like crystals forming within the amorphous fluid right there. And these uh, monosodium urate crystals often display what we call the birefringence, this greenish discoloration with polarized light, okay? And it's not only uh, the MSU crystals which uh, show birefringence, also, also the calcium pyrophosphate, but the major difference is that the form is quite different. This one has four sides, okay? Might be square, rhomboid, rectangle, or some other shapes right there. While your monosodium urate are needle-like crystals, okay? Now we have also this staircase uh, ladder formation crystals. These are your cholesterol crystals essentially the same as the one found in your urine, okay? As well as this, this is your calcium uh, oxalate crystals, which form the uh, cross, okay? Or your envelopes within the squares, okay? So this is the general um, category or table that shows you the, the crystals that can be found within the synovial fluid. So envelopes are your calcium oxalates, for example, monosodium urate needles, calcium pyrophosphate, rhomboids, squares or rods. But the major difference is negative or positive birefringence. That means the type of polar polarized light they are exposed to, to display the greenish hue, okay? The one which do not show any birefringence is your uh, appetite crystals, which come in um, small particles and in uh, Toblerone shaped uh, crystals, like in osteoarthritis. So these are the diseases associated with uh, these crystals, right? Now let's go to a chemical examination of your synovial fluid. So these are the common parameters uh, measured in your um, synovial fluid. Essentially, you have to compare it with plasma. So when you take synovial fluid, one should also take plasma. 
for chemical analysis, okay? chemical tests sent to the chemistry section of the laboratory. So as you can see, the total protein is actually lower than the plasma, but similar percentage or proportions with these uh, components, okay? So we have also hyaluronic acid, which is also present in your synovial fluid, absent in your plasma. Glucose, like I've said, is quite similar, might, but might be lesser than the plasma, but uh, usually less than 10 uh, milligrams per deciliter. So if you have 70, uh, somewhere in the 60 or 70 is normal here. Or if you have 100, minus 10, around uh, 90 uh, milligrams per deciliter. Below that will be lower. So there is a, a decrease in glucose content of your synovial fluid. Now, uric acid and lactate are also similar as that in your plasma. Now for glucose, um, like I've said, uh, you have to compare it with the serum level. And of course, you have to do a fasting as well, just to get the baseline um, measurements of the person. So normally it falls within this range. So less than 10 milligrams per deciliter of the plasma concentration. Like I've uh, given an example earlier. For septic arthritis, the difference might be 20 to 60. That means if you have 100 milligrams per deciliter concentration of plus, uh, glucose in your plasma, uh, it might be around 80 or even 40 milligrams per deciliter in your synovial fluid. Uh, as we all know, glucose is acted upon by uh, various enzymes that can degrade it. So you have to do the examination, glucose examination within one hour. For proteins, uh, the same as with the plasma, but can be increased in the following conditions. Essentially all the other conditions, there's increased protein. Then uric acid and lactic acid and lactic dehydrogenase are also measured uh, on a routine basis. Uh, uric acid, of course, is um, required to form the crystals, monosodium urate crystals, in, as in gout. In fact, you have also increased uric acid in the blood, so hyperuricemia, okay, which may also mean that there is increased uric acid in the synovial fluid, whereby if they have a sufficient uh, molecular strength, they can form crystals within the synovial uh, fluid. Lactic acid, usually uh, a helpful diagnosis in septic arthritis because elevated uh, levels almost always indicate a septic arthritis because normally it's just less than 25 milligrams per deciliter. Lactate dehydrogenase, uh, usually is increased in rheumatoid arthritis, infectious arthritis, and even gout. So <clears throat> neutrophils uh, are increased during acute phase of these disorders, contributing to the increase in lactate hydrogenase. You might know that uh, neutrophils often secrete this uh, enzyme right there. Now your cerebral fluid can also be used for immunologic examination or serologic examination, whereby you can find some um, parameters like your rheumatoid factor. So you add here your reagent to the synovial fluid and uh, they might be identified by uh, coagulation, agglutination or inhibition of agglutination, something like that. Sometimes it can also be used to uh, other platforms like ELISA technique, okay? Whereby you can identify several immunologically important uh, 
analytes like anti-nuclear antibodies, which can be found 70% in SLE. Okay. Then finally, we can uh, subject the center fluid to my microbiologic examination, where one can do the gram stain, culture, KOH or calcoflower, white stain, and acid fasting. Uh, now, this is a gram stain showing you intracellular uh, cocoa bacilli in pairs, which indicates that uh, it is actually gonococcal. Okay, and this is the calcoflor showing you the hyphae and the uh, <laughs> spores right there of a fungal element, so fungal infection. All right, so I think uh, that ends my presentation of uh, Sandoval fluid examination. Please read um, Henry's for further details. Thank you very much. Stay safe always. Until next time. Bye.